What's up, Gromies? Welcome to Chalk Talk Episode 5. If you look back in our previous episodes, we talked about good research, good content. We dove into environment, lighting, and nutrition. So we're getting all the basics started right off the rip. Now we're ready to get some beans in the soil. These up here are some of the genetics that I have ran or I can swear by that are really good. I know some of these, like the Humboldt County, they had the triploid thing, which... I think they were just trying to put something out too soon. They weren't ready. Triploids are not ready. I would not recommend running that. But Humboldt has a lot of good fire out there. They're doing a lot of pheno hunts. They got a lot of good good people involved in that. Crop culture, my dude Chris, from um, he's just over from in Illinois. We got to meet up a few times. I'm running his Panya Glue Skies right now, and he has really good results with all of his breeds. So check some of these guys out. I won't go all through all of them. But just, just when you're thinking about genetics, don't always necessarily – lean toward that white label these home growers that have been growing for years been working very on their own cultivar specifically maybe for themselves that they dial in that's going to give you the same results every time that's what you're looking after i believe is running something that's genetically sound you're not going to have something harm on you you're not going to have um, food issues they're just a very good genetic to run that's there's easy to, easy seeds to run and there's harder seeds to run just when i say hard i just mean some are more finicky on like ph or maybe nutrition there's just a lot of things that comes into genetics when you're running them think about the flavors the taste the yields everything that you're going to want from that genetic when you're picking them make sure they have a very good background there's new breeders popping up all over throwing trash all over the internet and i don't want you to get into the the we take all these right steps and then you throw these seeds in here that are supposed to be fire and you throw them in there and they and they, they don't even germinate or, or they're doing a bunch of funky stuff on you. I don't want you to spend all this time, money and research and then get a genetic and then take it upon yourself to think that you're failing yourself because that can happen. I've run genetics that have just totally crashed on me and, and that had a high reputation and I don't necessarily want you to have, go down that same path. So make sure you're running good genetics, something that's been run for a while has a good backing. So I won't keep diving into genetics. We just want to get some beans in the soil. And I wanted to get you a small list of what I run or what I've, um, I could almost swear by that is going to give you good results. So when it comes to germinating a seed, that's going to be your first step. There's many ways to go about it. I'm going to talk about a few. So when I first started back in grade school and I never planted anything, I just like to take bag seeds and throw them in a, in a jar or a paper towel. So if you're germinating, you could take this paper towel, put some water in it, wring it out until it's damp, fold your seed in there, put it in a dark humid area, wait till you get a little bit of a taproot out there. Some people like a little taproot, some like to get a nice little half inch, three quarter inch tail on there. It's up to you. I don't think there's really any wrong way or right way. Um, I'd like to direct sow into soil as much as I can. Um, but I want to show you other ways to do it because we're new growers and I want you guys to find your own way and what works for you guys. There's a can of can out there. My dude Don, he makes it's just a, a little cylinder. It's got a tray for water. You can divide your seeds and it's going to germinate in there. And you can seed soak. You can soak them in a, a jar of water with maybe some aloe or, or, or just plain water. Just make sure it's good, clean, natural water. You don't want it too cold. You don't want it too hot. You want it to be in a nice, humid, warm environment. So what I like to do is I take a just a shot glass or a little cup and I just put some RO water in there just because my tap water is just a little high in the PPMs. So I don't want to, when I say PPMs, that's part per million, like your, your, your um, other elements that are going to come in your water, like your iron, your zinc, your, your calcium and stuff like that. So it's not necessarily bad, but with seedlings and seeds, they can be very temperamental. So I like to give them plain water and I do a seed soak. And I just, my idea of that is just to get that whole seed absorbed and soaked with water. So when I plant it directly into the soil after this, that I know that it's already got the moisture in there, but you don't have to do this. I think a seed soak can be an extra step sometimes, and I may never use the seed soak. It's just what's worked for me, so that's what I do. So then you'll take this seed, you'll germinate it with those methods that we talked about, and then when you're ready, when you get a, a tap root or you think you're ready to plant that seed, what I do is I take a five-gallon bucket and I put soil on there. And I will add water to this and I'll do what's called, the, I do the squeeze test. I learned this from Jeremy over at build -A soil And you take that soil and you squeeze it and you just want like one drip. You don't want drips running. You just want one small drip. That's going to ensure you have perfect moisture to start off your grow, which I think is very, very key with seeds and seedlings. Because at this stage, anything is going to slow them down or even possibly kill them. So we want everything to be as perfect as possible. So get that moisture perfect. Take that fresh seed. 
I use tweezers. I think you can use your fingers. I don't think it's a huge deal if you're a smoker of some sort. Maybe wash your hands. So we're going to take this seed. Just take your pinky and push down to maybe like your first crease in your, in your, uh, on your pinky and put that seed in there. Push the soil or the soil over top and don't, you don't need to press down or anything. Just push the soil up top just enough so when that sprout pops up, it's going to pull that seed shell off with it. Otherwise, you're going to get helmet head, which isn't a huge deal. You can, we'll get into, you can spray uh, the head of the, the seed and it's going to soften that seed shell to where it's eventually going to pop off. You don't want to mess with that too much. Um, so when you're, so we're at this stage, so we got the seedling germinated where it's in the soil, you just planted it. So now we're going to need to be in a warm humid area so if you can get 75 78 80 degrees 80 is a little too warm for me but i think it's going to work just fine for you 75 to 78 degrees is what i like to run and then i run a high high humidity 70 to 80 percent humidity sometimes it even creeps into the 80 85s i'm not going to try to fight that to get that down because the more humidity the better the the tap root is too small to absorb water so it's relying on those when when that stem pops up those cotyledons those first leaves that come out of there, the single leaf, it's going to res rely on the stomata and the light, the photosynthesis to keep this plant alive. It's not using the roots at this point. So that's where overwatering becomes um, kind of a scare when it comes to planting in soil and people avoid from it because they're like, oh, I don't want to overwater, I don't want to underwater. But promise me, promise you this, if you take that, if you do the, the test, the water test, you get that moisture perfect, you have a very good environment with good temps, good humidity, you're not going to have to water that thing for the first two to three days and you're going to already see life. You're going to see your, your first collydons pop up, your true leaves are going to start to grow in, and then you can mist it. What I like to do too is, so we took, we got that perfect moisture, sorry I keep kind of bouncing around on you, it just kind of comes as I go, there's no script here. So. You got that perfect moisture, right? You put it in your solo cup or your bud cup or, or your one gallon, whatever you want to plant in. If you're sexting, one gallon is what I like to do. But say you're in a, a solo cup, take that and feel the weight of that cup. That's what the weight you want to maintain throughout that whole seedling process in that cup. Even if you need to take it and put it on a scale, I've done this. I did it when I first started growing. I'd take my cup and I'd put it on the scale. Okay, this weighs such and such. I'd write it down. So then two days on die, I'm like, oh, that, that may feel a little lighter, but I don't know. Throw it on that scale. If it's a little under that weight, water a little bit and just mist it. You don't want any big floods of water coming in. Don't take, you can take a water bottle and kind of pour it in there if you want, if you don't want to use a, a little nozzle. I used a mister just to mist the soil because you don't want it to just run right through, which is going to happen a lot with seedlings because there's no roots, that there's no soil structure. So it's just going over the side and running right through. And that's okay too. You can just leave your solo cup there and those roots, once they get established, will eventually soak it up. Don't have it sit in that water for a very long time. If it's sitting in there and you don't have the roots yet, pick it up, wipe it off. You don't want that just sitting in water. That's going to bring gnats and other problems into your garden. Um, so you got the seedling in there, you got the temperature, you got in their environment, and now you're off to a great start. So. Once you're in the seedling stage, we're gonna keep that high humidity, keeping the high humidity, good temperatures, keeping that moisture level on point is gonna be key. So that's all we're gonna really dive into right now. I wanted to get you some beans in your soil. I wanted to show you how to start your seeds. Stay tuned for next week. We're gonna start talking more about the seedling stage, keeping that alive, leaning towards transplant, what your next plans are, and walk you through that, Gromies. So thanks again for watching Chalk Talk, episode five. Much love, Gromies, and stay tuned till next time.